Hello everyone, this is Wes Henson, pastor of the Ridge Church, and the Ridge Church campus is located at 7350 Old Highway 13 in Carbondale, Illinois, and I want to thank you for joining me today for this week's small group Bible study for the week of April the 9th, 2023 at the Ridge Church. Now this week we conclude our Bible study series that's titled, My Encounter with Jesus, and thus far we've looked at several who have encountered Jesus, and in each case, Jesus met their need. We looked at the Samaritan woman who was looking for water, and Jesus offered her water from which she would never thirst again. And then there was the lame man who sat beside a pool of water, and Jesus restored his ability to walk. There was a woman caught in the act of adultery, and Jesus forgave her sin. And then there was the blind man who needed to see, and Jesus restored his sight. And when Jesus healed these folks, he not only met their physical need, but he went above and beyond meeting their spiritual need as well. Last week, we looked at our personal encounter with Jesus, and we see that his death on the cross made the forgiveness of our sin possible. And this week in our encounter, with Jesus, we are going to learn that Jesus' resurrection offers eternal life for me, for each of us, for all who believe. So let's begin. We're in John chapter 20. Let me look at verses 1 and 2. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb and so she went running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one that Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So the truth here is that the tomb where Jesus was buried was found empty. You remember last week we saw that Jesus was hung on the cross. Uh, he was left to die, and they took down his body and Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus approached Pilate for the body of Jesus, and the two of them uh, hurriedly prepared Jesus' body for burial, put him in the tomb where there was no one who had ever was ever there before. And so it's the first day of the week, the Sabbath is over, and Mary has come to the tomb to give a proper, if you will, burial uh, to the body of Jesus. When she gets there, she sees that the stone has been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Now, we don't know exactly when Mary Magdalene first encountered Jesus, but Mark tells us and Luke tells us that she was possessed by seven, seven demons that Jesus had cast out of her. So it was clear that this, earth, this early encounter that Mary had with Jesus changed her life. And she became a follower of Jesus, often traveling with him and the disciples in their ministry. So Mary had a lot to be thankful for. So it's no wonder that she felt the need to get to the tomb early on that Sunday morning, the first day of the week. When the Sabbath was over and before the sun had even risen, she made her way to the tomb. Now, other women accompanied Mary to the tomb. She was there all by herself, but John's focus is on Mary's encounter with Jesus. And that encounter began with a discovery that something was out of place. The stone had been rolled away. The disciples and Mary Magdalene investigated the reason for the empty tomb. And you see, folks, we need to investigate that reason as well. So let's, let's read on. We're going to skip on down to verses 11 through 16 as the disciples and, and Mary are trying to find out exactly what happened to uh, Jesus' body. Verse 11 says, But Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. <coughs> and they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, why are you crying? 
Who is it that you are seeking? And then supposing he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. After the resurrection, Jesus encountered many people, and one of the first was Mary. Note the detail here that John gave about what Mary Magdalene saw when she looked into the tomb. She, he, uh, John tells us she saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. Now, Mary wasn't sure what to make of what she was seeing. Uh, even when she turned and saw Jesus, she didn't recognize him. And it wasn't until he called her by name that she saw him for who he is. Jesus met Mary Magdalene, even in her doubt. And he does the same for us. Jesus is there, and when we doubt, he's there to reassure us of who he is. And also we notice here that our eyes, like Mary's, need to be opened to the resurrected Jesus. Okay, let's look at verses 17 and 18. Jesus said, Don't cling to me, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. So the truth here is that the message of the resurrection is to be shared with others. It shouldn't surprise us that the first directive or the first uh, command that Jesus gave Mary Magdalene was for her to go and tell others what she had seen, uh, that she had seen the risen Lord. There's not a more important message in all the world than this one, that Jesus is alive. And the distinction here I want you to, to notice in these verses uh, between the use of my and your is very meaningful. Uh, Jesus says to my God and to your God. You see, Jesus has this unique relationship as the only son from the Father. And while we are not sons and daughters of God in the same way as, as Jesus is the Son of God, God does call all of his followers to be his witnesses. And we don't witness alone. Uh, Jesus' ascension set the stage for the coming of the Holy Spirit as recorded in the book of Acts. So it is the same Spirit who indwells believers today that empowers us to share the same message that Mary was sent to tell the disciples, and that is that Jesus is alive. And folks, we should not delay in telling the good news to those who need to hear it most. Okay, let's let's apply our lesson today. Let's kind of uh, find some um, applications, if you will, that we can use and take with us from the lesson this week. How will the truth of the resurrection make a difference in your life? Well, number one, trust Jesus. Knowing the truth of the resurrection of Jesus is really not enough. We need to commit ourselves to Jesus by trusting him by faith. If you have not done that, this morning or this day, right now, is the best time to do it. Number two application, pray and share. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you this week to tell at least one person the good news of Jesus' resurrection. And then application number three is to go and tell. Consider the possibility of going, maybe even on a short-term mission trip, to share with others what you have learned about Jesus. Okay, let's wrap it up for our lesson for this week, and we wrap it up this way. You know, death strikes the young and the old. No one escapes its earthly grip. However, the good news for believers is that death is not the last word. If you click on the links, you're going to discover a printed summary of this week's study, and then let me invite you to join us on campus Sunday morning at 9 a.m. as we go into detail. Uh, for this week's study. Bye for now.